Art Aggregate's a co-working, co-creating space. Uh, so a combination of private art studios, a, uh, like a community workshop, people can come in and use it. Uh, we run classes, we do workshops, and then I also act as a custom fabricator. So we do a lot of stuff for like restaurants, stores, uh, breweries, that kind of thing. People that need kind of obscure things produced and don't know where to get it done. The, the reason I started this is because when I graduated university, um, I went to OCAD and I had access to like shops and tools and constant peer interaction and like places to store my work and uh, somebody to like source supplies for me. And then I graduated and you're just out on your ass, right? So, you know, here's your degree, best of luck, right? Uh, so then I was kind of working in my parents' garage and basement and, and producing custom work. I was doing a lot of um, like trade show booth type things and some of my own sculpture work as far as like small furniture pieces or installs for people's houses. And then it came to the point where I needed more space. You know, my neighbors were getting upset that I was running a saw at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I, I'm trying to do fiberglass work and like I really shouldn't be doing that in a residential setting. Mm. So I had to look for somewhere else. And then when you get into commercial space, it's huge, right? So how do you take that investment on and how do you fill this space like if it was just me in this space it would be super cavernous and empty and weird for me to just be here by myself mm -hmm. um, and I miss that kind of collaborative aspect of being at school of like seeing what other people were working on and having that feedback from people like oh I like what you're doing but it'd be way easier if you did it this way right so like people that people know things that you don't know and just to be able to bounce those ideas off people is, is super helpful in like the creative process What I want to build it up to is just like is is a maker space is to have people in here um, you know I got seven full-time people in here right now as far as studios go and then I got another eh, 10 right now as far as memberships uh, that are recurring mm -hmm. and I would like to see that number climb to like maybe 50 right mm -hmm. I would love to see people in here all day every day um, currently I don't have any employees like it's just me mm -hmm. uh, which kind of limits the the hours and the days that we can be open because I can only do so much but just to extend that where you know not to say that it would be 24 hours but like a big chunk of the day, seven days a week, 365, like to have it so that people have somewhere to go and work and do what they like to do um, in, a, in a way that's affordable and, and in a way that they can actually accomplish what they're trying to do instead of working in their bedroom or trying to make things work at home where they can go to work and like do that thing that they like to do. This is our kitchenette meeting space, uh, kind of everybody's first introduction to Art Aggregate. Okay. Uh, so we went a little bit over the top with it. Um, the, the color choices as far as the walls, like this kind of deep abyss blue type thing, uh, the orange door, the orange baseboard, this monstrous map of uh, table. So um, this is a huge slab, we got it out of Ottawa. Um, all this kind of spikiness and everything is all cancer in the wood. Um, but it makes for a very beautiful piece. And then we want it to be semi-functional as far as people could, you can't really cook here, but you could warm up your lunch, make yourself some coffee, have a drink, sit down, um, have kind of an informal meeting with people. Mm. That's uh, That was kind of the idea with this space. And uh, I, I feel like it's kind of a fun introduction. It's a little cozy space, yeah. you know, it's nicer than my house. Uh, behind us here is kind of a retail space. So a few of our members have things on offer. Uh, it's also a place for when we're teaching classes or workshops. So people that have never been here before, mm -hmm. they can kind of go in there and get a taste of things that we make here or I uh, have examples of like custom stuff that we do so they can get a feel for that kind of thing the processes that we're doing mm. and we're eventually gonna put two desks in there to have as a uh, as a hot desking area so people that just want to be a little bit quieter sit there on their laptop make a phone call they're still in the space they can still talk to the people that are here but if they need a second to go in a quieter space they can kind of hop around the corner hop on their laptop and uh, and do their work. Uh, my mom, Judy, is a, is a textile artist. So uh, this is called Burning Embers. It's a big piece that she produced for uh, the Gladstone Hotel's Hard Twist, I think a year or two ago. And then this actually just got submitted to Cambridge Fiberworks. So in September, this is going to like a massive uh, fiber arts festival in Cambridge. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful piece, it's big. Um, it speaks to, uh, she, she had a house fire when she was a child, they lost everything. Um, and it's kind of just a, the whole barn board and, the, and this kind of spinning flames representation kind of speaks to that experience. I do a lot of stuff for like weddings and events as far as little laser cut signs or you know ceremony with an arrow. Uh, we do place cards for people's uh, uh, like names, that kind of thing. Space, when I got it, it was kind of like a dilapidated office. You know, it was dirty. Uh, we replaced a bunch of the drywall, did a new paint job, did kind of like the lighting and stuff down the hall. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we added these little niches here to put artwork and stuff into, okay. uh, just so that we could feature things a little bit more, right? So uh, my brother was in charge of all of this kind of LED lighting, so it's all plugged up in the ceiling. Uh, and then it lights up the artwork like this, which is, uh, which is fun. And this is an ever-changing, we get, you know, some people want their art back. I don't own most of this art. Like, it's just kind of on loan to me from the people that are, uh, that painted it or produced it. So, you know, this, oh, I want this piece back. I have a new piece that I've been working on. Like, so sometimes we'll swap this art out. Okay. Um, and kind of do that kind of thing. Or if, if somebody else new moved in and was like, really wanted to show some work, I would take something of my own down and put theirs up. Let's check out uh, the classroom the workshop classroom. area. Yeah. yeah. So the same gentleman we were just talking about, Ian Milligan, he's the one that painted this. Um, so I gave him kind of the phrase, we were looking for something that was three words, um, that kind of summed up what this space was for. Um, so we, we talked about the word learn, we talked about the word um, discover, um, and then we kind of got in this whole, like the whole idea of the space is to create things, right? And, uh, and the whole point of like a classroom is, is not necessarily to learn, it's to discuss things, right? And then mm -hmm. through discussion, learn. So we were talking about creating things, then discussing things, and then that's all we do here. Okay. So right, so you create, discuss, repeat. You create, discuss, repeat, and you kind of work through this process. Uh, members get priority, and uh, depending on what the, the project is, members will get a discount on, on what it is that they're doing. Um, we typically just charge a per head fee, so you're not, you're only out money, like the more successful your, your classes or your workshop is or your meeting is, the more successful I am. But if nobody shows up, it's not like you're out a huge overhead fee like some other venues would charge you, right? Mm -hmm. So, welcome to the to the workshop. This is kind of the it's kind of the area that sold me on the space to begin with. Gigantic high ceilings, uh, lots of natural light. We've got a bunch of windows in here. It's a lot of space, man. It's it, it's a lot of space. The overall of this building is about 5,500, 6,000 square feet, depending wow. if you include like my office and stuff. Typical woodworking stuff down here. So we have uh, most of the machines that you would need to work on most wood products and a lot of plastic products like ABS, acrylic, uh, vinyl, that kind of thing. So. If you're trying to build like little display cases or furniture or even just structures, like a couple of our painters here build their own canvas stretchers mm -hmm. because it's cheaper for them to go get the wood, buy the canvas in bulk, learn how to use these tools to assemble the frames, stretch their own canvas instead of going to Curry's, Michael's, any of those kind of art stores and paying like super inflated prices for yeah. canvases, especially if you want like obscure sizes. Thankfully, as I said, my dad was a contractor, so I kind of inherited uh, some of his like okay. other tools, uh, things that he wasn't necessarily using anymore, or um, like stuff like this table saw is not something that you can drag around to a job site. So he had to obviously invest in things that were a little bit more mobile, and then I just purchased this off him at you know, cut, cut rate prices. But for the rest of this machinery, like we teach people how to keep all their fingers attached. Um, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, I still got all my hands, no serious injuries. Um, but how to use the saw safely, how to use the bandsaw, the lathe, the chop saw, like all these kind of things effectively, efficiently, safely, yeah. uh, and to, to you know, we take a look at the kind of project that they're trying to do and we can help you decide if this is beyond your skill set mm -hmm. or if this is something that you're going to be able to learn how to do, right? If, you're, okay. if you think you're going to come in here and start making guitars and you don't have any experience with that, it's going to be a little tough. But mm -hmm. if you want to learn how to build a box or put some furniture together, I mean, that's something that we can get you to that skill set in a day. Yeah, while keeping your fingers attached. Right? While keeping your fingers attached. That's kind of the main point. Yeah. So that's what this machine over here in the corner is. Uh, it's a 40 watt laser. It's got uh, kind of a 10 by 14 cut area. Uh, so this does everything. I mean, I usually use it mostly for small wood products, um, coasters, small jewelry, that kind of thing. Um, signage, you know, you're making letters or stencils. I do a lot of stencil work out of this. Uh, over here we have um, kind of our chop saw stand. So we can do about 12 to 16 feet on either end, depending on what we're doing. So if you're doing baseboard crown molding, uh, trim work, you've got to chop through some two by fours, this is, this is just a workhorse. It does one thing and that's all it does, but it does it efficiently and effectively. And then a few other things as well. So we have a lathe here. So lathes are uh, for making things that are circular. Uh, bowls, table legs, uh, baseball bats, that kind of thing. So essentially what happens is it's just a big motor, spins a piece of wood, and then uh, you would use a different, uh, a variety of like chisels and knives and things to carve away at that wood, to put lines into it to, and to shape it down to what you're looking to do.
But mm -hmm. what aggregate actually is, is something that's made up of a bunch of smaller somethings. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in a case like this is we have a whole bunch of people from different backgrounds, different mediums, different skill sets that are coming together to make one bigger thing. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the whole idea behind uh, aggregate. Um, art, I mean, I use the word art. A lot of people are artists. I mean, in, in a way, does, designers are artists, cooks are artists. Um, so we were trying to just say that, like, if you're in something creative, this is the space for you. And I don't, yeah. you know, we're not super strict on what that entails.